The Imperial Japanese Mission 1917, a record of the reception throughout the United States of the special mission headed by Viscount Ishii. And when the Imperial Japanese Mission was uh, in New York City, they had a dinner and some pretty famous people spoke at this dinner. One of them was John Dewey. John Dewey is the father of our failing, disastrous public education system. Here's what he said. Listen very carefully. John Dewey, professor of philosophy in Columbia University, who was the next speaker, was listened to with great intentness. He said, quote, Someone remarked that the best way to unite all the nations on this globe would be an attack from some other planet. In the face of such an alien enemy, people would respond with a sense of their unity of interest and purpose. Unquote. Now, bear in mind, folks, that's 1917. Well, I'm going to preface this film and try to put some things that you've already heard today into some form of perspective. You've heard us talk a lot about energy, about suppressed technology, about uh, hidden governments, about groups of people who want to manipulate populations for reasons you really won't listen to me because their mind is still closed. They don't understand what is happening to them. When a silent weapon is applied gradually, ladies and gentlemen, the public adjusts, adapts to its presence, and learns to tolerate its encroachment on their lives until the pressure, psychological, via economic, becomes too great, and they simply crack up. Therefore, the silent weapon is a type of biological warfare it attacks the vitality, options, and mobility of the individuals of a society by knowing, understanding, manipulating, and attacking their sources of natural and social energy, and their physical, mental, and emotional strengths and weaknesses. And they become depressed, and they don't understand what's happening. And they're bombarded with more violence, and more immorality, and more wars, and more death, and more diseases, and more AIDS all brought about by our controllers to force us in a state of capitulation, which means surrender. And sometimes I get a pain in my chest and in my heart that I cannot contain because I know what's happening in And it's so difficult to get anyone to listen. And I know that if they do not listen and open their minds, and change things, take the power back into their hands, that they are doomed to slavery forever. For the entire history of the human race, no man or woman ever, unless they were a king, a queen, a sultan, an emperor, or an emir, were ever free. Until a bunch of malcontent criminals, religious misfits, went to the New World, established the United States of America and wrote a constitution with a Bill of Rights. And to this day, the American citizens are the only people on the face of this earth who have ever, totally, truly, and totally been free. But it's going backwards now. You see, we always carried the torch of freedom for the world, and we're not doing it now. If you don't watch out, the United States will lead you into slavery. Where well, we've already lost about half of our Bill of Rights, which protects our Creator endowed rights, which were given to us by God. You see, we have no constitutional rights. Our forefathers did something that nobody ever did in the history of the world. They said there is a God. And God gave us, man, certain unalienable rights, which no one can ever take away from us. We can't even contract to give them away, because they were given to us by God. First time in the history of the world, man stood as a sovereign king in his own right with a government as his servant. And now, I am ashamed to say the American people do not even vote anymore. They become apathetic, irresponsible, stupid, and lazy. And they are giving it up. And if the United States Constitution and the Bill of Rights fall, all freedom in the world will fall with it. I can guarantee you. All of them. What do you think would happen, ladies and gentlemen, after all the indoctrination that you've been exposed to through the movies and television 
and even newspaper ads about extraterrestrials and flying saucers. Now they pump $100 trillion into the SETI project and begin to finally to accept that there may be extraterrestrials from outer space threatening this planet. Why, you'd be willing to give up whatever you had to give up, whatever's necessary, your rights, your money, your house, whatever, to join all humanity in a one-world government to face that threat so that those little green men wouldn't come down here and eat our children. Just like you did in World War II. That's why this technology is being developed in secret, because someday they will fly over all the major cities of the world. And our leaders will come on television and say, we finally made contact with an extraterrestrial race. They're here. And since they are more technologically advanced than us, they are a threat. And we must come together as one humanity to oppose that threat. Did you know that Ronald Reagan said six times in his presidency at the end of speeches? Wouldn't we all come together as one humanity and forget our petty differences if we were threatened from some other species from some other planet? Why would a president say that six times? Did you know that in a meeting with Mikhail Gorbachev, Robert Reagan said that Premier Gorbachev and I have discussed the possible invasion from outer space of some other species from another planet, and we have agreed and if this were to happen, we would combine the military forces of the Soviet Union and the United States to face that threat. And then Mikhail Gorbachev walked to the microphone and said, I cannot foresee such a possibility, but if such a possibility occurs, we will gladly furnish our military might together with the military might of the United States to oppose an extraterrestrial invasion 